Welcome to a two-part tutorial on Photoshop's filter gallery and more specifically my favorite filter in that collection, the cutout filter. Now before you take your image into filter gallery I'd like to make one suggestion and that's to reduce the file size of the image to something in the neighborhood of about an 8 to 12 megabyte file and there's two reasons for doing that. First of all all of the filters in filter gallery to some extent really distort or distress the image to the point that there's no reason for taking a lot of photographic detail in there. It's just going to get lost. And secondly one of the beauties of filter gallery is the ability to work with your images visually. The smaller the file size, the quicker the previews update, and you can. You can see the effect that different filters have at different settings very quickly. So this image, this iceberg pinnacle, I photographed off the coast of Baffin Island in northern Canada. It's a fairly large image. We'll just see. We'll go up into the menu in Photoshop under Image, Image Size. And it'll say right here, yeah, this is a 51.6 megabyte file. I could take that into filter gallery, but again, there's no reason to do that, and it's just going to run very slowly. So I'll change this. I'll go into document size. I'll just grab a number here. Let's say 8 inches. Let's see what that does. Actually, perfect. At 8 inches, well, it's showing us right here. This was a 51.6 megabyte file. This now will become an 11 megabyte file. Perfect. Two other things to point out quickly while under image size. Resolution, make sure that should be at 300. Don't change that. That's perfect for printing. And these three boxes here, make sure all of them are checked on as is shown here. That will just help to constrain the proportion. So when you change one size of the document, the other one will change uh, proportionally and you won't distort the image. So I'm going to say OK. That's 11 megabyte file. There it is very quickly. And that's something now we can take into filter gallery. So let's go up into the menu in Photoshop, Filter, Filter Gallery should be one of the first ones listed there. Click on that and it's going to open up a preview window that's going to dominate your monitor. Now there's three window panes in here. The first, the biggest one is your preview and that's what's shown right here. And by default, Filter Gallery will open to whatever the last filter you had, in my case you used. In my case it was the cutout filter, so that's what's being shown. But I want to point out in the bottom left hand corner, this little plus and minus sign. This will, I like to be able to see the entire image in that preview window. So I'm going to click on the minus sign a couple times so I can see the entire image there. Now the second window pane that I'd like to show you is this middle one, this long skinny one right here. And that's where all the filters are actually squirreled away. They're all nestled in these little folders. You click on these flywheels and it'll open up showing you a thumbnail or a preview of all these different filters. And I counted them at one point. There's over 45 different filters here. Now, don't judge the filter. They all have these icons, uh, previews, or thumbnails showing you kind of what the filter will do. Don't judge it too quickly when you just by that visual or even when you click on it to, yeah, this is, that must be the whiteout filter. The, the, the settings that they default to don't really give you a true indication of what the filter can do. The true power is actually up here in this third window pane, this long skinny one in the far right, and specifically in the uh, right hand corner, this is where the controls are. And this is what allows you to interact with that filter and your image. This is where the control is. Now the one I want to show you in this tutorial is a cutout filter. One of the reasons I like this particular filter currently, anyhow, is that one of my favorite Canadian group of seven painters, Lauren Harris, uh, the settings of the cutout filter, depending on what you put them at, uh, quite often will emulate the look he had in a lot of his paintings. So let's walk through these controls. There's three controls, and again, they're unique. Each filter will have a different set of controls. With the cutout filter, there's three. The first one, number of levels. The best way to think of this is, if you remember back to kindergarten or grades one and two, and if you would, you know, you would cut out pieces of construction paper and glue them down to create an image. Think of number of levels as the numbers uh, of different colors of construction paper you have to work with. Uh, the highest setting is the most c levels or the most colors. It's eight. The lowest setting is two. Uh, actually, let's take it about halfway, something about four. And you can see, yeah, there it's getting very graphic down to its lowest setting of two. And actually, I see more than two levels there. Uh, there's not always a direct correlation between the uh, th the number and what it's the filter is actually delivering. But the, the idea you can see, the lower the number of levels, the more graphic the effect gets. The second control we have here, edge simplicity, 
What this one does is this one tries to, the lower the settings, zero, it tries to follow the edges as best it can in the original image. So at zero, it's trying to follow the, find and follow the image as best it can. The highest setting, it's going to get very graphic. And yeah, you can see this looks like you could have cut this out of construction paper. The third setting, edge fidelity, and I should mention here too that all th all these settings work. There's uh, there's a reciprocal effect between them. They all will have a different effect depending on where the others are set. So they're not independent of one another. They work together. For example, the edge fidelity. If I changed edge sim edge simplicity to its most detailed setting, edge fidelity would have no effect. It doesn't matter. There's only three settings for edge fidelity, but it doesn't matter if I leave it at one or three. There's no effect. But if I change edge simplicity up to 10, for example, edge fidelity will now have an effect on the image. And you can see it can get very, very abstract depending on where you set these things. And actually, I kind of like that <laughs> look right there. Not for everyone. And that's actually a point of these, uh, of any technique, whether it be, you know, digital or photographic, lenses, filters, any of these things. The image shouldn't scream technique. It shouldn't slap the viewer in the face right away with technique. It should, you know, the the idea is this thing. These things should be image driven, not technique driven. So the image should engage the viewer. They shouldn't be slapped in the face by technique right away. Later on, they may be interested in how the image was created and wanted to know what the technique was, but it shouldn't scream technique. So I'm gonna I'm gonna find a setting here that's gonna kind of. Uh, Something emulates maybe the look of, of Lauren Harris, kind of a blend in between the original and what the cutout filter can deliver. Let's say OK to that, and it should preview right away. Yeah, there you go. It's a quick preview of the of the image because it's a relatively small file size. Now, these, these effects can become tiresome quite quickly. Uh, a lot of the more creative aspects of using the filter gallery is in blending the different effects of different filters through layers and layer masks and that's what I'd like to explore in the second part of this tutorial. I'd like to leave you with two links one to some more work if you'd be interested in uh, Lauren Harris, some of his paintings and secondly there's more examples of this technique in the autumn issue of Canada's Photo News magazine and there's a link to get a free Canadian subscription to that uh, publication here.